having explored pretty much every inch of the sheep's anatomy, it may seem strange that I've pretty much ignored the part that we use the most, the part that's most familiar in our homes and on the high street. This stuff, wool. Now, the reason I've left wool until last is because it seems hard to find something new or unexpected to say about such a familiar sheep byproduct. Wool is sheared from living sheep before being processed into fibre, spun and dyed. It can be knitted or woven into everything from jumpers and carpets to snooker tablecloth and even coffins. It's a fabric that's been with us for so long, it's difficult to get excited about it. Frumpy. Frumpy. Is that what you think? <laughs> yeah. So wool, frump, dull. Yeah. Cosy, I suppose, that's about it. Cosy? Yeah, cosy. Wool? Well, I hate wool. The feel of it is awful. I'd say a bit boring. <laughs> But despite what we might think, it turns out that even something as everyday as wool has its own surprises. Especially when it comes to the part it can play in the furniture and fittings we buy for our homes. To find out more, I've come to the Chiltern International Fire Testing Facility in Buckinghamshire. Here, an expert team tests fire resistance in a wide range of products. For this visit, I'm joined by friends Aisha and Dan, who've recently moved in together. They both consider themselves fans of modern interiors, so I'm wondering where wool rates in their shopping list of fashionable home fittings. The two of you have just uh, moved into a flat together, haven't you? Yes. yes, we have. So right now it's the exciting time, you're furnishing it. Mm -hmm. So shopping? Yes, lots of that. And do, are we getting on stylistically? Do we agree on things? We're very different. Yes. <laughs> we like, I like so. minimalistic, she likes clutter and just too much colour for me personally. When you're out shopping for your mm -hmm. furniture, do you ever consider wool as a material? Not furniture, no. No? No. No. Not wool curtains? No. Or no. <laughs> sofa? If it looks nice, it looks nice. I never think, oh, what's it made of? I never think about that at all. One man who'd like Aisha and Dan to take a second look at the fabrics they choose for their home is Sir Ken Knight, one of Britain's leading firemen. Explain what you do, Sir Ken. So I started as a firefighter, culminating in being a Chief Fire Officer of London, and now I'm the government's Chief Fire and Rescue Advisor. To demonstrate what's so special about wool, Dan and Aisha are being asked to witness a revealing experiment. We're going to test how wool compares to a synthetic fabric, polyester, by staging a bedroom fire inside what's known as a firebox. And what have we got in front of us here? Well, what I've set up here is what is a typical materials of a, of a bedroom. So we've got uh, a woolen blanket, uh, a woolen mattress, a woolen pillow and actually a woolen carpet. How does that compare to your bedroom, guys? Wool the, blanket. the blanket, definitely. The, the bed frame, definitely. But not of wool. All of synthetics. Mm. So we're going to now set this on fire as though it was a bedroom fire and just see what happens and see how the materials perform. I'm just going to pop a little photo of you guys in there. <laughs> Let's see how that stands up, shall we? We'll just put that on the bedside table. Oh, lovely. There we go. There we've got a flame. So this is on the wool blanket. Still... Hasn't really ignited. You see the difficulty you're actually having yeah, setting I mean, light I, to it. I actually can't set fire to the blanket. In fact, it takes almost two minutes before the fire is underway. So and now you can see that it's really caught a light, but in a localised area. Very local. And I think we ought to come out the way now. Right. And just see how long it takes. Okay. Still very slow smouldering. Uh, smoke enough to set a smoke detector off, uh, but actually not a fast-burning fire, not a huge amount of heat being given off. It's not spreading at all. You know, normally when you see yeah. fires, they race across. Mm -hmm. Naturally occurring substances in the sheep's wool, like nitrogen and lanolin, give it an ability to self-extinguish, reducing the spread of fire. We're now at seven minutes. I don't think we're going to see much more of this for some time. And you can see the state of the fire there. It's still not a room alight. It's still not even the whole bedding alight. So I think we're probably ready to stop Still ready there. to put this out? I think we are. Let's do it. It takes mere moments to douse the flames and we go to examine the damage. Chari, uh, not much flame spread. Nothing on the bed frame, look. No. And look, look, no dripping at all. So the wall carpet we put down actually didn't actually have any fire damage at all. After eight minutes, I'd expect so much more. I expect the whole thing to be up in flames by now. Yeah, Definitely. I'm very surprised as well, and very impressed. Mm -hmm. Do you think we can get the picture out? Shall I? Yep, go on, let's, let's see. Look. Let's see if they're still there. Oh, look. Oh, no. <laughs> Got a bit of, of water, a bit of water Just there. Just a, a little bit of water damage from the fireman, but apart from <laughs> that, no, 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 intact. Good. There okay. you go, look, you've survived. You survived oh. fire number one. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Now it's time to repeat the test, but with the kind of synthetic polyester furnishings that Dan and Aisha use in their flat. You're going back in, you two. <laughs> right, I shall place you again delicately on the bedside table. Stop watching the ready. ready. There we go. So... Right, I, I'm away. A lot lower ignition temperature than uh, wool. It no, has so, definitely caught fire. So that was about ten fire. seconds to when it started to take fire. Yeah. Flames dropping onto the carpet, and this is a polyester carpet as well. Can you, can you smell it? Oh, yep. Very smell smell it smells a lot quicker. Look at the smoke. It's black, and it does oh. smell. This is a toxic smoke coming out of here. Look at the difference. I mean, where are we at, time-wise? Oh, we're not up to a minute yet. Not a minute? <laughs> right, should we move away from these fumes? Yeah, we should, we should, we should. Toxic. Just two minutes in, and the fire is really gathering pace. You're seeing a lot more actual flaming, and there's a lot more smoke actually high up. You can smell it even out. at this end now. Look at the bedding now, because it's spreading across the bed very quickly. We're just in four and a half minutes. <laughs> oh, to think that that was on our beds, I mean, I'm shocked. Mm. It really is. It's literally five minutes and it's completely in flames. Yep. That fire has now burnt all the way through the mattresses. Look at the wow. smoke coming out. So you really have now got a serious room fire. We're still only at six and a half minutes. We're almost coming up to eight minutes. Uh, so this is about where we stopped it before, and when we said, look, there's not enough burning. And now if you compare what we're seeing now with very similar bedding materials, they're just made of a different material. How long do we want to let this burn? I, I, think, I think we've seen enough. I think we've seen yeah, enough. We've got point. to send firefighters yeah. in still to put this out, remember. Right, OK. So I, I think we're ready to start. Let's put them in. Let's put them in. OK. With the flames finally extinguished, we go to see what's left of the bedroom. Completely disintegrated. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I know which I'd rather be sleeping in. That is frightening, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, look. Everything that was left after eight minutes on this bed, the little sheep have survived. Yeah. <laughs> and there's nothing. Mm. What do you think about this whole experiment, guys, now that you've seen this? It's, it's more than just colour and texture now, isn't it? Yeah, it's been a real eye-opener. It'll definitely give us something more to think about which <laughs> when we go shopping, so more arguments. But I think this is one thing we'll both be agreed on when we yeah. purchase Yeah, no more arguments our when it comes to safety, that's, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. So, Ken, does this mean we've got to get rid of everything polyester in our, in our bedrooms and in our houses? No, it doesn't. But it means people need to think about safety in terms of their choice of products. So we've seen here that uh, Dan and Alicia can make those choices about colour and about type, and there are choices in safety we'd like people to think about as well, particularly in the event of fire. While all mattresses and pillows, regardless of what they're made of, must be treated to comply with a certain level of fire resistance by law, there are currently no fire regulations for duvets, carpets or curtains in the UK. For this reason, it's always worth checking labels on any such products to see what they say in terms of fire safety. Is there any point in asking about the picture, Sir Ken? I'm afraid this is all that survived. There's this no, is it. There's no picture and there's no frame anymore, I'm afraid. There's no nothing. This really is everything from the bedroom. The fire-resisting power of a simple woolly blanket is just one of the surprising things I discovered while exploring how and why sheep are used to make our products. In fact, it seems as though many of the sheep's body parts from its warm, durable fleece to its moisturising grease, have natural qualities that are hard to beat. It's made me and the people I've shared this journey with think again about the humble sheep. And even though some of the things we do with it can be quite hard to stomach, I'm glad we don't waste any of it. <laughs>